Thank you. We're really excited about Glenn Fry being here. We're going to do Desperado with him. Did you hear it in rehearsal? Yes. No, I didn't hear it, but everybody was raving about it. Sounded pretty scared. nice. And he and I have been working on a little sequel. I'm trying to talk him into doing it. Maybe, a, maybe later on a duet with me, a sequel to it called Hey Desperado. Hey Desperado. <laughs> so, uh, now, Paul, explain to the folks, Desperado is now, is this a rock and roll a legend? Is this a, a big a classic? I think it's classical music. We consider it classical All right. music. Yeah. And, and you will be performing with We're Mr. Fry. We're going to be Fry. performing it, very, just staying very true to the original, accuracy, accuracy being very important in classical music. Yeah. Could I do one thing before we go? Could I pay a kind of a special thank you to Mr. Elliot Randall, who's been with us uh, for the week on guitar. And Elliot, nice to see you. Doing a nutty job. <laughs> Elliot Randall. Thrilled to have him with us. Thank you very much, Elliot, for helping us out. His pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. My first guest tonight was a founding member of one of the most popular American bands ever, the Eagles. He now has a, quite a successful solo career, and this is his second album. I have a copy of it right here, entitled The All-Nighter. And here now, with our band singing the classic Desperado, please welcome Glenn Fry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to dedicate this song uh, to my songwriting partner of nine years, Don Henley. And uh, this is the first song we ever wrote together. Let's see, how does this go again? <laughs> Desperado, why don't you come to your senses? You've been out riding fences for so long now. Oh, you're a hard one, but I know you got your reasons. These things that are pleasing you can hurt somehow Don't you draw the queen of diamonds, boy She'll beat you if she's able The queen of hearts is always your best bet Now it seems to me some fine things have been laid upon your table but you only want the ones that you can't get Desperado Oh, you ain't getting no younger and Your pain and your hunger They're driving you home And freedom That's just some people talking. Your prison is walking through this world all alone. Don't your feet get cold in the wintertime? The sky won't snow and the sun won't shine. It's hard.
you, Paul. Uh, we have to pause for a commercial. We'll be back with Glenn Fry. Very nice. Very important. So, Glenn Fry is here. Uh, you guys sounded terrific, by the way. You and, and the band and uh, the Jordanaires. Yeah. Very nice. And uh, congratulations on this album. It's doing very well for you, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, very things nice. are going great. You, you mentioned uh, uh, Don Hanley before you sang that. Do you still see him? Uh, we talk a couple times uh, on the phone every now and then. Now that the Eagles aren't together, it's... Uh, when did they finally, when did you guys finally uh, unplug it? Well, we, I think we unplugged it in, in 1980, but we didn't tell anybody until 1981. <laughs> we wanted to get a start on yeah. our solo albums, uh -huh. you know, so uh, we just Was it a, uh, uh, a pleasant uh, experience, the breakup? Was it nasty? Yeah, or? it was ugly, David. Well, it was uh, ugly. Yeah, it was brutal. <laughs> How long had you guys been together? Nine years, yeah. you know, and with, uh, I think with five, you know, five guys for nine years. I kind of look at bands like... Uh, it's like when doctors get out of college or lawyers get out of college, they always join a law firm or a doctor's. You know, and bands are the same way, I think, for men in their 20s. Mm -hmm. You know, you kind of band together, you're not so sure of yourself. And, you know, now that we're a little older, it seems like a logical progression to sort of set up my own practice. Yeah, or, but you guys, uh, you did some damage when you were together, didn't you? You mean... <laughs> well, positive kind. Like, I'm, like, I mean... Well, no, I mean, like that uh, Hotel sorts. California. 11 million copies. I think that was in the U.S. I actually think it probably sold more closer to 18 million. Yeah, now that... So that's worldwide. That... But after 10 million, who's counting, that's you right. know? That's right. a convention of record store owners in the audience tonight. Um, so now, all right, well, let's talk about when you guys were together and traveling around and stuff. Did you do uh, the, the legendary kind of damage that... Um, you know, speaking of damage. Well, we, you know, the Eagles had sort of on the surface, I think we looked, uh, you know, kind placid. Of, kind of like we were sort of, you know, normal sort of guys. Yeah. But uh, your stage you, act. Not when you have Joe Walsh in your band, it's, uh, yeah. it's a little different. We, uh, we used to wreck hotel rooms, you know, in the early days, but uh, nothing like the English <laughs> bands can do, nothing like the Who and Led Zeppelin. They were really the best at uh, room trash, is what we used uh -huh. to call the art of room trash. Now, what would you guys do? And, and uh, then let's find out. I mean, how did you escape? Did you get arrested for it, or what happens? Well, pick a we city. Let's, let's just do this. Pick a city. Atlanta. All right. Now, you're in a hotel. Yeah. A nice hotel. Yeah. All right. What well, happens? Things happen like... We never really wanted to wreck a hotel room or anything. It was like the <laughs> days and days of this building up. One day you get a cold breakfast, the next day room service is not there. About 14 days on the That's road, right. all of a sudden it's like one hotel is going to get all the grief. Yeah. And, uh, and when we when we were first starting out, we used to do things like you know we just we'd check in and then I'd look in, in the swimming pool to see how many television sets were in it. Mm -hmm. But uh, then of course the thing is then you have to pay your then you have to go down to the manager and bribe your way out and, you know, tell them you'll pay for everything, please let us go. So then we, we kind of got into more subtle forms of room trash, mm -hmm. things that were a little more, you like know, what? you couldn't get caught. Well, like instead of throwing the TV in the, in the pool, we used to get back from the gig about 11.30, you know, and flip on the TV. If Carson was on, we'd say, geez, Johnny looks thirsty. <laughs> You know, and you could just, just by taking... Wait a minute, Johnny looks thirsty. Johnny looks thirsty. All right, yeah, okay. And uh, this, this way you could just sort of pour a glass of water into the television and sort of watch the tube would... I mean, it really does a, quite a good thing. It's a cool-looking thing. Yeah. But then instead of having to bribe your way, it all, all that happens is the next person who takes your room calls up and says, hey, uh, my, televi you know, my yeah. television's not working. So that became, you know, the, the methods of revenge got more subtle. Yeah, Johnny looks thirsty. Johnny. Um, geez, that's, uh, now, how, many, uh, how many hotels did you think uh, you damaged in your career? Oh, not that many. Yeah. Not that many. No, we'd save it up for a good one, you know, yeah. for something. We'd wait until it built up. You know, we'd always start out on the beginning of the tour and say, okay, no. Got to behave. You know, that's where we got to behave. Yeah. Did know? Joe Walsh one time have a, a chainsaw with him on tour? Yeah, he, had, he carried his own chainsaw in an anvil case. So, uh, in case he couldn't fit his ping pong table into his room or something, he could, you know, That's redecorate. a real trouble. Uh, That's a real problem. You know what I mean? If yeah. the elevator couldn't work, he could go down to Henley's room, you know. Yeah. Uh, the Eagles, an yeah. American band. All right, so, now... <laughs> uh, 
Did you guys have arguments toward the end or even in the beginning? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I think you always do. Uh, you know, we always had disagreements. You can't uh, work closely with, you know, four other people. Now, how would, you, how would you settle them? Mm. I'm not sure we settled. <laughs> now, were, were they artistic disagreements, that kind of thing? Or whose oh. turn is it to drive? Was it more like that? Or? <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the funny things that used to happen was there's usually four good suites in a hotel. Out, out in the, you know, not New York or, mm -hmm. or Los Angeles, but there were five guys in the band and always four good yeah. suites. So yeah. somebody, you know, always wanted to take their tape measure out and come down to your room and see if you got a bigger room. Uh -huh. Who got the most square yeah. footage? So I used to yeah. just, you know, open the door and I'd yell down the hall, I got a sauna and a stereo, bye! <laughs> and then kind of close the door and. <laughs> yeah, but those days are over now. Yeah. yeah. And you live in Aspen? You like that? Yeah, I do. Very beautiful much. place, huh? It's a beautiful place. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of night skiing. Night skiing. Yeah. All right. Uh, and the album is doing quite well. It's called uh, uh, The All Nighter. Glenn, nice to meet you. Thank you very much for being Thank here. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure, me, David. sir. Thank pleasure. you. Uh, we have to pause here for station identification. We'll be right back to take a look at the lifestyles of the plain and simple.